Who here? Nope. Sorry. <laughs> Who here can honestly say that they love to write? Not very many of you. Okay then. Well, guess what? That was me. I used to hate it. That's because my teachers always told me exactly what to write about. They told me how many sentences to put in the paragraph, how to structure my sentences, what kind of words to use. They told me where to put the periods. It just wasn't me. But I discovered that when I wrote the way that I like, with my own style, about things that matter to me, I could finally be me. My style is what I like and not what anybody else tells me to like. Now, I discovered this around third, maybe fourth grade. So after that, I always really liked writing, but I didn't truly start to appreciate it until right here, September 6, 2011. Better known as one of the most important days in the history of the world, my 13th birthday. <laughs> 6.23 a.m. Ring, ring. Oh, who could be calling me this early in the morning? Hello? Hey, Em, happy 13th. It was my grandpa calling to me to wish me a happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Grandpa. And then he says, by the way, your great-grandmother died this morning. I was so lost and confused. Apparently, she had been sick for over a year, but nobody bothered to tell me because they thought I already knew. She was the strongest person I've ever met. She was 95 years old, and she still lived alone drove herself to and from church and the grocery store every single Sunday. She wouldn't let anybody help her. I guess I just never thought that she wouldn't be around. And then, all of a sudden, she was just gone. I didn't know where to turn. I could barely understand what I was feeling. How was I supposed to try to explain it to somebody else? That night, I wrote a poem about how you always focus on the rose and forget about the thorns. And the rose draws you in with its beauty. Oh, sorry. And the rose draws you in with its beauty, whispering false promises that you forget to question. And then, when you get just a little too close, the thorns stab you and you fall to the ground and your wounds cannot heal. Now, this may sound pretty depressing, but it really did help me to understand what I was feeling. The solar eclipse in my mind began to vanish. I understood that even though I was sad that she was gone, it was okay and I could accept it because she had lived a full life and she was surrounded by people that loved her. Writing has obviously helped me through a lot of my troubles, but Writing isn't the only creative outlet that you can pursue. You could try art, music, theater, anything. Just go out and try something, any creative outlet that you've never tried before. You may not think that it'll help you that much, but how are you ever going to know if you don't give it a try? Recently, I was listening to a story on NPR about a man named Bob Carey who believed that laughter was the greatest medicine of all. Now, when this professional photographer's wife was diagnosed with breast cancer, it didn't seem like he had very much to laugh about. So he developed the Pink Tutu Project, which was where he went out dressed up in nothing but a pink tutu and went all around the world looking for the greatest locations on Earth to take self-portraits. He would then sell these pictures, use the money to help breast cancer funds, and to give laughter the greatest medicine of all to those who need it most. Now, being in a pink tutu obviously worked for him, and though I'm, all, I'm sure that you would all look great in a tutu, I'm not sure it's the best plan for everybody. Bob Carey obviously had no problem expressing himself. 
but so many of us do. We have all these thoughts and feelings that get jumbled around in our heads, and sometimes we just can't explain them. Me, with a head full of words and not one useful expression. I and so many others have felt like this every single day. We try to understand what's going on, but we just can't. People around you may be feeling the exact same thing, but they put up a mask so that you can't see what's going on in their heads. To you, it looks like everybody else understands the world, and they find it easy and simple. You try to act normal and happy like everybody else, but honestly, sometimes it's not easy. That's why I encourage you to go out and try these things. Writing, art, photography, music, anything. You never know until you try what could make a difference in this jumbled mind and organize these words until they make sense to you. Now, I know what you're thinking, but this is not an assignment. You can make your own guidelines, if you have any at all. How much money does it cost to pick up a pen and paper and go write something down or sketch something? How much money does it cost to go out to your local theater group and participate in a play? Now, trust me, I'm a high school student. I know what it feels like to be crunched for time, like having six tests a week or having a project do what feels like every single day. But whether or not you consciously realize it, you always schedule time in the week just to do something for yourself. Even if it's just 20 minutes to stare at the wall and get your brain to finally turn off. Well, guess what? This is for you. All of these different options, writing, art, music, theater, they're all to help you understand your emotions and ultimately to help you understand and cope with your life better. Now, through these creative outlets, I and so many others have found our new light, and we have found our new vision. And I promise you, if you get up the courage and take that first step to go try these yourselves, you can too. Thank you. <laughs>